In the last 10 years, the retail apocalypse has taken out a lot of once beloved brands. Closed 53 stores this Where year. Where are the teenagers shopping today? While some of these companies' futures remain unclear, others are completely dead. Here are 10 companies that fell in the past decade. Payless was once the largest family-owned footwear chain in the United States. The company peaked in the 1990s, selling 250 million shoes a year. Its self-service strategy had customers shop for shoes themselves, allowing the company to employ fewer people and save on operating costs. Plus, with most shoes costing $3 or less when it launched in the 50s, about $25 today, Payless was a bargain compared to other retailers. But Payless didn't count on competition from discount retailers like Target and Walmart, which quickly rose in popularity throughout the 2000s. And once online retailers like Zappos began to dominate, Payless's sales struggled. In 2017, Payless officially filed for bankruptcy. Two years later, the company filed again and announced that it would close all of its stores. At its height in 2004, Blockbuster employed 60,000 people. With more than 9,000 locations globally, the movie rental giant was worth about $5 billion. But a mix of bad leadership and competition from Netflix, Redbox, and Video On Demand spelled the end for Blockbuster. In 2010, it filed for bankruptcy with a billion dollars in debt. At the time, it was the last remaining video rental chain in the U.S. In 2011, Dish Network acquired Blockbuster's remaining assets for about $320 million. And two years later, Dish began closing all remaining stores in the U.S. But there's still one store left. A privately owned Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon is the last remaining in the world and still going strong. Recent nostalgia for 80s and 90s brands has renewed interest in Blockbuster. In 2019, apparel brand Dumbgood released a collection of Blockbuster-themed merchandise and hosted pop-up shops in Los Angeles and New York City. Borders was an international book retailer headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. A book behemoth, Borders and its Walden Books subsidiary had locations in airports, outlet malls, and shopping plazas. But the retailer made a huge mistake when it prioritized expanding its brick-and-mortar stores instead of its online presence. Plus, Borders didn't have an e-reader as popular as Barnes & Noble's Nook or Amazon's Kindle to keep the company alive in the digital age. In 2011, Borders filed for bankruptcy. At the time, it had 650 stores. The last store was liquidated and closed in September 2011. As a final nail in the coffin, that same year, Barnes & Noble purchased Borders' customer list and trademark. At one point, Sports Authority was the largest retailer for sporting goods in the U.S. But as the decade continued, it just couldn't match competition from the higher-end Dick sporting goods. And it couldn't keep up with online purchases, made on Amazon or directly with sports leagues. In March 2016, Sports Authority filed for bankruptcy with a huge debt load. It had 14,500 employees at the time. That same year, the chain closed all of its stores nationwide. Founded in 2004, Charming Charlie was a mainstay of American malls in the 2000s. At its height, the accessories chain had almost 400 stores around the world. But by 2017, it fell victim to what the chief financial officer called the continuing decline of physical consumer traffic. It filed for bankruptcy and closed 100 stores. After successful financial restructuring, the company emerged from bankruptcy in 2018. But it wasn't enough. A year later, Charming Charlie filed again, saying it only had $6,000 in cash left. The company stopped website sales and announced it would be closing all of its 260 stores. The high-end children's clothing brand started the decade off great, with 950 stores across the U.S. in 2010. But that year, things turned sour. A private equity firm bought Gymboree for $1.8 billion. The new leadership quickly opened 400 stores overseas. But that rapid expansion just wasn't sustainable. Spread too thin, the company filed for bankruptcy in June 2017 and closed 375 stores. Gymboree took the chance to reorganize and came out of bankruptcy in September 2017 after shaving a billion dollars in debt. But it didn't stick. Sales from the Children's Place, Gap, and TJ Maxx far outpaced Gymboree's. The company could no longer support its cost and capital structure. In 2019, Gymboree filed for bankruptcy again and began closing all of its 800 stores. 
In March of that year, rival retailer The Children's Place bought the Jimmery brand. Founded in 1859 in New York, AMP was the largest grocery store chain in the U.S. from 1915 to 1975. AMP was able to offer lower prices than traditional grocery stores by purchasing large amounts of inventory from manufacturers. It further cut costs by getting into manufacturing directly, allowing the company to control nearly all aspects of the grocery business. However, by the 1970s, AMP stores were outdated compared to its competitors, who were opening up even larger supermarkets with modern features. Over the next few decades, specialized grocery brands like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's began to dominate the grocery market. After failing to keep up with new trends and connect with consumers, AMP found itself with a reputation for poor customer service and high operating costs. And the Great Recession further tanked AMP's already falling sales. In 2010, the chain filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, but it emerged as a private company that briefly became profitable until 2014. But sales fell again, and the company reported a loss of $305 million for its 2014 fiscal year. AMP filed for bankruptcy a second time and closed all of its stores. Wow Air became popular after its inception in 2011 for offering ultra-cheap flights from the U.S. to Europe, often for less than $200. In 2018, the Icelandic airline employed more than 1,000 people, had 11 aircraft, and transported about 3.5 million passengers. However, the budget airline struggled with profitability likely because of a combination of rising fuel costs and a decrease in tourist visits to Iceland in recent years. On March 28, 2019, Wow Air suddenly announced it was ceasing all operations, leaving hundreds of passengers stranded. CEO Skuli Mogensen confirmed that over a thousand people would be impacted. Wow Air once flew in over a quarter of all visitors to Iceland, and after its unexpected shutdown, Iceland saw a notable decline in its tourism industry and an increase in unemployment. Henry Bendel founded his namesake store in 1895, and the brand and retailer became a pioneer in the world of luxury fashion. Bendel is credited as the person who first sold Coco Chanel's designs in the U.S., and the person who discovered Andy Warhol. And thanks to Jackie Kennedy, the Henry Bendel flagship store in New York has landmark status. Bendel's was acquired by L Brands in 1985, and continued setting the standard for luxury retailers everywhere becoming the first retailer to host in-store makeovers and in-store fashion shows. However, L Brands announced in September 2018 it would be closing all 23 Henry Bendel stores and ending the brand to improve company profitability and focus on larger brands that have greater growth potential. The 124-year-old brand had ceased to be relevant to consumers, and it showed. Despite its once iconic status, Henry Bendel lost more than $45 million in operating costs in 2018. Toys R Us began as a single store in 1948 and grew to become the first big box toy store. Its growth coincided with the rise of iconic toys like Barbie dolls and Mr. Potato Head, as well as TV commercials, which helped build Toys R Us's highly successful brand. Toys R Us time will Thanks to Toys R Us, the toy industry's worth grew from $500 million in 1950 to $12 billion in 1990. At its peak, the company controlled a quarter of the global toy market and was selling 18,000 different toys in over 1,000 different stores. But thanks to a combination of changing tastes in toys, going private in 2005, a failed buyout, its stores becoming dated, and the eventual rise of e-commerce, Toys R Us began to struggle. Competition from big box stores like Walmart and Target quickly overtook Toys R Us, hurting the once dominant retailer's already shaky sales. However, the biggest factor behind its demise was Toys R Us's growing debt. Over the years, Toys R Us owed more and more money and ended up devoting much of its resources towards paying off that debt until finally declaring bankruptcy in 2017. At the time, Toys R Us owed more than $5 billion. However, Toys R Us isn't completely gone. True Kids Brands purchased the company's assets in October 2018 and announced plans to bring back the brand. In November 2019, Toys R Us opened a new retail store in Paramus, New Jersey. While we've seen a lot of iconic companies fall in the 2010s, our eyes are on the struggling brands that might just make a comeback in the coming decade.